All right, so now that you've already identified your three um, lowest performing teaks, let's talk about your reteach, reassess, and calendar. Um, so let's first talk about when are you going to be reteaching the lowest objectives? Sure, so based on the first ones that I um, identified, uh, and let me just come back here. 7-11-C, I'm going to reteach um, the week after break. Um, there isn't necessarily a place where the objectives coincide or where I'm going to be teaching something that overlaps. So I'm going to have to take a day to reteach whole class. I mean, 30, um, 38% is very low. So... I'm going to take one day um, from my flex days at the end and move it to the beginning, reteach, um, reassess the, that same day as an exit ticket, um, and then I'm going to include at the end of um, module assessment for that unit a couple of uh, questions of the standard so that I can gauge mastery over time of that objective. Perfect. So I heard the when, and you're saying it's a whole class, um, a whole class reteach, and when you're going to reassess, which you're going to be adding two assessment questions on um, the district assessment itself to be able to know what's the mastery level then. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I know you asked me earlier about like a tracking device, so I think I'm going to create a tracker that includes. Three ad bats for this uh, standard. Okay. So that uh, I can track it the day I reteach, then I can track it um, maybe at the end of the, mo of the module, and then I'll have a third ad bat for second teach for the students who don't master it after the reteach. Perfect. Um, and okay. how are you going to leverage the SPED team so that we focus on our domain three scholars? Yeah, I think one, um, given access, uh, given them access to my, continue giving them access to my, to my lesson plans, um, sh sharing the data with him and, and focusing on who are the scholars who uh, need additional support during independent practice and um, when those students are coming to interventions and Saturday schools. So that they can support me. I think a big a big gap that I've um, identified is during my reteaches or during my second teach, whether it's after school or on Saturdays. Um, I don't al always have the um, special education support. I don't think I've set a clear expectation. One, but two, I don't think I have clear communication with them around their day to day progress. I think we have. Um, I gauge to look at data once we reach the, the formative assessment mm -hmm. uh, portion, but I don't know that we communicate clearly about their daily progress and how they're doing. So I think to answer your question, one, being purposeful around how um, I can use their support during um, second teach, two, during first teach, making sure that they identify um, opportunities during independent and guided practice to support students and help me hold them accountable and also giving them access, continue giving them access to uh, lesson plans and daily data that, that gauges the progress of students. Great. So now that you've already identified your lowest performing, the when, the who, and how you're going to reassess them, we're going to now shift on how um, the priority student interventions, which is going to be on the next tab. Okay. Yeah, I think there are um, a few buckets that I want to focus on. Um, on this tracker, you have all students that missed the next. Um, so I've highlighted uh, with different colors anyone who missed the next possible band um, by one to th from one to three questions. So. These 11 students are students that missed um, the approaches band by one, from one to three questions. So a little bit more of a push and we could have significantly increased our, um, 
our approach is uh, scores, right? I think the silver lining here is um, when we look at uh, our bubbles, uh, our bubbles meets um, this band right here. Our students that missed, like this, uh, fifteen students are students that missed uh, meets by one, two, or three questions, and this uh, well, one, two, three. 10 students missed masters by uh, one, two, or three questions. So um, to be strategic around like our domain three targets, I want to make sure that I um, bring my bubbles, my bubble meets and my bubble masters um, during, um, during my Monday through Friday tutoring. And I think uh, this is good. This is good for these two bands because one, they're going to continue performing. Uh, they're going to continue learning throughout the year. So I think their scores are going to increase. But if I'm strategic about it with them, these are students that only need about an hour of tutoring to reinforce the gaps that they've had. Um, because they're already very close to the meets or masters level. Um, I think one hour of tutoring for meets and one hour of tutoring for masters is enough to help them close the gaps that they have that kept them from reaching the next band. Um, with regards to the students who did not meet um, and were one, two, three, or four questions away, um, I want to bring them on Saturday because um, one, a lot of these scholars are ELs sped um, or as part of my CSI groups and I think they could benefit from more time more one-on-one -on -one, and a slower approach um, to closing their gaps and I think that the Saturday school approach could help us um, maybe use more time I'm wondering if we'll have access to tutors or maybe other um, other interventionists or teachers who, who can help us so that we can really tailor um, the instruction to closing individual gaps. So um, I think this is what I want to do, but I wanted to get your feedback around, like, is this the right approach? We still also have um, our academic block intervention to focus on more individual gaps, but I wanted to, to, to get your thoughts. Yeah, I really love how you mentioned how you wanted to target um, bubbles um, from did not meets to approaches um, our domain three that need more time on Saturday. I think that's a very strategic approach because they need more time for the instruction. I really like how you named how you wanted your meets and masters for tutoring due to the fact that one hour to be able to be able to close that gap. Um, that's a very strategic um, approach that you want to do. And then I think that you mentioned you want to leverage your SPED team to make sure that they are here during um, possible Saturday schools if we're targeting Domain 3 to see how we can support our scholars who are SPED. I want you to talk to me a little bit about how are you going to hold conversations to, our, um, to your scholars to let them know where they're at? That's a great question. Well, we had our, our goal setting conversations earlier in the year. Um, I honestly haven't been doing a good job holding them or creating a culture to where I refer to those goals often. Often, So I think this is a good opportunity for me to reset the expectations, um, bring back the individual student trackers, and then remind them how, like what their goals are in terms of questions, growth, um, and performance at the end of the year but also let them know how, how much they've learned and how much closer they are um, to reaching this goal based on last year. I think um, I'm going to use the academic block uh, intervention in the morning, those 45 minutes, uh, to maybe pull them out by my homerooms if possible. I'll connect with Ms. Hernandez to see if that's a possibility. Um, and then have one-on-one, -on -one, five-minute conversations using the same script that, that you gave us, revisiting their growth goal and their outcomes goal um, 
to to motivate them to close the, the specific gaps and to leverage Saturday school, after school tutoring, and even intervention to to help them celebrate what also set goals around what needs to be done. And how are you going to invest parents on letting them know um, the extra time that students may need for intervention before STAR? No, I think that this is one where I'm going to need your help, to be quite honest. Um, I want to start with my domain three parents and just go from there. So maybe um, if we look at the parents who came to the STAR uh, pairing night and focus first on the ones who didn't come so that I can start holding them accountable. And then um, I know that we have a curriculum night coming, so maybe focusing on, on, on that night and talking about STAR and how they did and what we need to do um, to close our gaps, right? So I think focusing on the main three parents first, just because those are the ones that I want here, but then focusing on like my meets and masters kids through other uh, pairing nights that will inform them or share with them more about like the overall impact of STAR and how what we do on a daily basis relates to their success on the assessment. Great approach. So um, we're going to um, shift over to the last tab, which is the closing the agenda, where we're going to jot down your next steps um, to, to be able to then come back to this and reshift anything that we need to. Um, is there anything or any other additional support that you need from me? Um, I think, well, let, let me restate my next steps, and then I guess based on that, um, we can we can see how you, you can support me a little bit on that first. Um, I want to quantify like who of who in my EL subgroup um, and my SPET subgroup would really uh, would benefit from this, the second teach and track the reteach so that we can. Um, Hit the domain three meets target for EL and uh, SPET. I know that we were 10 percentile points away and 3 percentile points away. So uh, figuring out who those kids are and tracking their performance on reteachers and their attendance to, to Saturday, Saturday school and after school. Um, the second thing is uh, creating a tracker with three at bats so that I can track my um, the effectiveness of my reteach. Starting with like the first reteach, then um, the two or three problems that I'll add to the end of module based on that reteach, and then leaving an opportunity for mastery over time maybe um, a little bit later, or if they come to a tutorial uh, for that specific uh, standard, then I can track that mastery as well. Um, I also need to um, revisit my goal setting. I'm going to make sure that all students have forms. I need, I'm going to make sure that all new students receive a form. If they didn't get one at the beginning of the year, I'm going to communicate with Ms. Hernandez so that I can utilize intervention. Um, and with uh, your permission and Ms. Olivas uh, to make sure that I can pull out kits um, and have one-on-one -on -one PTG conversations based on their, um, on their semester exam data. And last, I'm going to utilize um, my domain three uh, rosters to contact the parents of domain three students who didn't come to our parent, uh, STAR pairing night call them, give them the update on the student performance. And for my meets master students, I'm going to utilize curriculum night um, to talk about goal setting, PTG, and the, the student performance for STAR. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today on this data conversation. Um, I will be uh, making sure that you have your next steps on the spreadsheet so that we hold each other accountable. And I want to make sure that we determine when will be the next time um, we can do a check-in and review and make sure that you're continuing your progress on your action plan and just uh, your reteachers and your reassessment. Yeah, I think what I want to do is send you my lesson plan for the reteach. 
um, to make sure that I'm targeting the vocabulary and the connection from the problem to to the student work in the way that we talked about. So I think um, feedback on that lesson plan would be very beneficial. I, I'll try to send it to you before we go and break. Um, but as far as the when, I think after I after I teach, like if you can, if we could rehearse um, my reteach. But then after they assess that exit ticket, I would want to see like how how that series of steps from the lesson plan to the rehearsal to the data went. So you can give me feedback before we Absolutely. move on. Absolutely. Yep, yep. I will be calendaring in your calendar when we do rehearsals to be able to model for you how to do a reteach. And then making sure that I give you feedback on that um, during that rehearsal time and just making sure that I give you um, feedback on your calendar. So if you're going to finish it, let's um, have it finished by um, de December 9th so I can give you um, feedback. And then we'll come back in January. We'll revisit your calendar to make sure you're on track when we come back. And then we'll do the following week. I'll make sure that I uh, send you a check-in to me make sure you're on track. Okay. Um, if it goes as plan, if everything goes as planned, I should be reteaching on the fourth. That is correct. So maybe like fifth or sixth, um, we can do another check-in. Do a, a check-in and talk about what went well mm -hmm. that day and see what we need to adjust. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Wong. Thank you, Ms. Connor.